Here at the U.S. Geological Survey Research Laboratory, scientists are discovering fish that were born normal, but now are not. What we're finding in the South Branch to the Potomac and the Potomac River drainage are male smallmouth bass that have immature oocytes, or you know, the precursor to eggs, in the testes in the male, male gonad. So basically these smallmouth bass, um, the male smallmouth bass, actually have reproductive components of both male and female fish. It's not visible to the naked eye. If we actually collect the fish in the wild and just look at the fish externally, we cannot tell if the, if the fish is intersex or not. We do necropsies of the fish and process the tissues for uh, microscopic analysis. And what they've been finding is a growing number of intersex fish. What it indicates to us is that there is something in the water that is very likely disrupting the endocrine axis of these fish and causing male fish to develop some female traits. We've already confirmed that intersex is pretty widespread across the watershed in the Chesapeake Bay. Um, so what we've been trying to focus on, we would really like to find the compounds that are responsible and where they're coming from. While there's been a lot of scrutiny and concern about pharmaceuticals flushed down the toilet, U.S. Geological Survey researchers don't believe that's what's causing these intersex fish. What we found in the past few years is, is that you know, the presence of certain chemicals and hormones that are typically associated with um, agricultural activities um, are associated with the severity of intersex in the smallmouth bass. Sure, so it's, it's not really clear where some of these chemicals are coming from. Um, we're working on that now. But you know, likely sources for some of these chemicals are um, from manures that are possibly being spread on fields. Um, also, you know, livestock in many of the locations around here you know, sort of have free access to some of the, the small tributaries. Um, it's really not uncommon to see cows actually standing in the water. One cow's manure doesn't hurt water, but this is a lot of concentrated manure in one place. Manures tend to be shipped from the farm to other areas as a cheap source of fertilizer. In addition to the finding of intersex, we've also been observing that there is a higher than expected uh, incidence of fish lesions and fish kills in these fish. And there very likely could be an association between the estrogens in the water, um, other contaminants, and the disease in the fish. And as USGS researchers try to pin down the source of the contamination, they now think it's not limited to farms where livestock live. We certainly don't grow as much corn around here as they do out in the Midwest. Um, atrazine, which is commonly used with the growth of corn, you know, is, is showing up in a lot of our water samples and is correlating with intersex. Agriculture, pesticides, pharmaceuticals, industry, all contribute to our troubled waters. But Luke Iwanowitz says most of the problem of intersex fish is limited to small and large mouth bass and some sunfish. Do scientists know why? Uh, we, we don't, and that's actually one reason why we're trying to do some of these laboratory, some of the laboratory work, is to try to figure out why why there may be a difference uh, you know, in sensitivity of these species. Neil Augenstein, WTLP.com.